Hi, this is Valerie from Media Rama and we are here today at Taj Lands End in Bandra, Mumbai to attend the consultation on the Digital India Bill. As you know, there is talk about the Digital India Bill replacing the ID Act 2000. Last time in Bangalore, Minister Rajiv Chandrasekhar had talked about doing away with the safe harbour provisions. This time we will see what are the latest development in on this topic. I had few pertinent uh, questions and you know concerns uh, per se on the Digital India consultation. First of all, it's the uh, discussion on the e-commerce because I mean there has been a lot of discussions going around from the Digital Competition Act and also uh, from the separate e-commerce policy that is going to be out from the Consumer Protection uh, in this, uh, Ministry. So the new set of guidelines under this are going to be principles based or like it will have another set of regulations under it because it will create a whole lot of confusion and jurisdiction and overlaps. Uh, second concern that I had is the, of the digital news publishers that Rajiv Chandrasekhar sir once mentioned like few months back. So is, if there is going to be a separate provisions for that as well, again there is going to be a concern regarding what could overlap and not overlap with the digital competition law again coming out. I think the third uh, concern that I had uh, is, is uh, I guess the timing of it because uh, uh, issues like data privacy, emerging tech like AI, uh, cyber security etc are, are going uh, being scaled up at different uh, territories EU, US so I think time is some, timing is something that we have to really consider What are you looking forward to in terms of the bill? Uh, I think the bill should not be sort of like a very compliance heavy mandate sort of a thing it should uh, give us the principles it should, it should have a principle based approach like giving us the sort of like the pathways or the guidelines that this is the line that is going to be forward rather than saying this is the things that should not be done Mm -hmm. or like that, uh, not very much compliance heavy. Because I think this is going to eventually demoralize the industry as a whole. Mm -hmm. uh, so it should be uh, uh, liberal, but it should also have the industries at a check. It should be a balanced approach. Are you hoping will be discussed today specifically? Uh, we are looking to see how, for example, they are going to take into consideration um, developing technologies, emerging technologies, like uh, let's say like AI or uh, misinformation for example or how these are going to tie into businesses because today everyone whether it's a citizen or a business has a digital presence mm -hmm. so just to see how uh, stakeholders and everything else are going to be balanced. Basically, we are saying issues of competition, the competition law can deal with but certainly the principles that we expect around the future of the internet should be captured here. Uh, safety and trust is a big, big, big deal because this marks is almost a signature theme of the DIA in that user harm regulation will be at the heart of how we deal with AI, how we deal with emerging technologies uh, and the guardrails will be seen, developed and the principles will be established to the prism of user harm. Our attempt is to regulate platforms to do the right thing, do the correct thing when they find that there is something wrong that has been posted on their platform. That is it. And even then what we are saying is if you still don't be the arbiter of what is right and wrong then don't hide behind the section 79 immunity. Those who are aggrieved by what is on the platform should have a fair opportunity to get this litigated and adjudicated in a court of law. That's all we are saying. I think one thing came out clearly is what are the principles that the government is looking at. Mm -hmm. uh, however, I feel that uh, the devil always lies in the detail. Yeah. And uh, it seemed to me that several points, uh, there is no not yet full clarity as to the way forward. Mm -hmm. So if the consultation, of course it is, it is still helpful because we know that what are the pain points government is concerned about. But what is the way forward even the government seems to be wanting the feedback from the members. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, but at the same time, government said the draft is ready and then you will, you know, you will sort of, you can respond to that. So this is where I'm slightly confused that if you're still taking the feedback and you're trying to give the draft by June, mm -hmm. you know, whether all the feedback that is likely to be given in the pre-consultation mm -hmm. is in fact going to be considered for the act, mm -hmm. right? So I think I feel that this pre-consultation more in terms of, you know, understanding what the government is thinking 
rather than actually enabling us to give feedback for the government to consider in their drafts. Mm -hmm. So that is where I feel, uh, you know, that that could have been done better. And I feel whatever, you know, sort of I'm hearing uh, during the consultation, I feel that the draft is likely to come out, though principle based is a good thought process, but vague. Mm -hmm. And when the law is vague, that is what leads to a lot of, you know, rule making, confusion and uncertainties, um, unfortunately, uh, you know, that is likely to sort of be an outcome of this, uh, of a vague draft. So I really hope that the law is precise. How, how would you want it to be precise? See, precise in the sense, either you say that there is a liability, then what is the liability for, right? That has to be precise. But if you say that there is no liability, we are simply focusing on, you know, principles to be evolved under the law and we are, this is more of a principle based legislation, then then that's fine, you know, then it's a work in progress kind of a, uh, you know, from a, from the rule making and all of that. But the moment you combine liability, right, with uh, the compliance, obviously then the law has to be precise. From the ecosystem perspective, that the various concerns, various challenges that the internet economy, the innovation side, the startup businesses and other social media platforms and the platforms in general, intermediaries in general, are facing those issues will be addressed. They will have a scope to be addressed in the Digital India Act. Uh, since it also talks about that it will be a risk and principle based approach and uh, he, he also highlighted some of the broad principles in terms of openness and uh, accountability, trust factor. So uh, really excited so that the you know all the users concerns are addressed and one very important thing that he highlighted that any impending regulation or legislation would be drafted it from the user from the prism of users hub. Hmm. So that is really a welcome step because I think the developing country like ours is uh, facing that kind of a challenge at the moment. Uh, it was really interesting to attend the uh, mighty pre-consultation uh, on uh, the upcoming Digital India Law. Uh, my feedback was that there are a number of sectoral regulation concerning digital intermediaries. For example, the RBI's digital lending rules. It's important that the upcoming law harmonizes uh, and is in sync with the sectoral regulation. And what we do creates a, a platform from which startups and fintechs can grow uh, and power India to a trillion dollar digital economy. The Mumbai consultation went on for about an hour. Like the event in Bangalore, Minister Rajiv Chandrasekhar once again raised the possibility of doing away with safe harbour. While stakeholders asked questions around sectoral regulation and AI regulation, the government made an important announcement of releasing the first draft of the Digital India Bill in the first week of June. While some stakeholders are looking forward to this, others are confused as to how the government will be including all of the feedback that it gets within this short period of time. For more information on the Digital India Bill and other things related to tech policy, please do follow Medianama.